Thank you for listening to the Black Delegates Podcast. Rate, reveal, share. Yo, Herb, take it from the top. One, two. My mic sound nice. Check one. My mic sound nice. Check two. My mic sound nice. Check three. Are you ready? Welcome to the Black Delegates Podcast. Today's date is November the 29th, 2020. We're on episode 136. I am your host, the Black Ryan. I am here with my co-host, Box Wine Poppy. Yo, what's going on, fella? Nothing much. Ghetto Phenom, what's good? Ghetto Phenom, glad to be back. All right. Did you <laughs> intentionally <laughs> bang on a pot when you said your name? I did. Is that... I did. Okay. This is my, this is my new intro. Oh, just banging on a pot. It's actually wow. a, a, a aluminum can. Oh, wow. It was a tall can of some O. Tall can. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. Okay. So we made it through Thanksgiving. So y'all know what time is what time it is, right? Paul know what time it is. Oh. <laughs> time, baby. We going to get on these Christmas songs. They're never gonna stop. Paul, I know you're ready. Your Luther Vandross was bumping all week. Man, listen, you told me. I, I, look, you, you should have replaced that one with, with the Luther Vandross. Uh, that, man, I've had I've heard that damn CD like six times. It ain't even on CD no more, man. It's just streaming. I can't get rid of it, man. It's just on the TV. Wow. It's everywhere. Yeah, Annoying. it's not. Uh, it, it, Luther, but but I'm Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving's rough. I don't, how you feel about it, Phenom? You 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 ready for the Christmas songs or what? Oh, not at all. And matter of fact, on Thanksgiving. I think we turned on uh, uh, whatever Macy's parade for a short time, and you they were that. it was somebody who was doing like a Christmas uh, performance, and I'm like, "Yo, it's still Thanksgiving. How are you doing a Christmas <laughs> performance already?" And my wife, she was she was all for it, but I thought that was a little disrespectful to Thanksgiving to be doing a Christmas uh, performance already. Yeah, probably. Very disrespectful to Thanksgiving. Man, how come how come uh, Thanksgiving don't have its own songs? Like, whoa, look, man, we got they all. Don't. Look, man, None. look, man, like literally, like right after Halloween, they dropped the, all the Christmas joints, and you have to hear that mess. I, I'm serious. There was like a radio station here in town since literally November first. They've been playing nothing but Christmas music. You go to the stores, nothing but Christmas music. Where's the Thanksgiving jams? Why we can't we get? There, there's there's a wide opening. Where is uh the homie Ray Parker Jr. from Ghostbusters? A uh, theme song. Where is he? Why you can't make a, a Thanksgiving song for us so we can just have something to bop to? Come on, man, give me something. I think we do have Thanksgiving songs. They're all gospel songs. That's trash. That we people need a, don't listen to anyway. We need secular. All the thank you songs are gospel. We need a secular uh, a Thanksgiving song, and it can't be just Goody Mob Soul Food. That's it, it's got to be something besides the head. I think y'all are sleeping on like the number one. Uh, Thanksgiving song of all time. The remix? Yes. <laughs> green, <laughs> beans. Oh, I, I played it. That's beans, greens, be. potatoes, tomatoes, right. ram, lamb. Yeah, we I played it. <laughs> <laughs> look, man. That's one of my favorite joints. Look, man, since we get into it, man, look, let me tell you, uh, Christmas is trash, man. Christmas is overrated. All I've been doing all weekend is uh, putting together Christmas decorations for the outside and inside, and I'm tired of it, man. I don't. I hate this whole part of the year. The only good thing is I didn't have to travel this year, so I'm at home. So I guess I, I'm not so tired. Uh, but now I just got more stuff to do. So now I'm just now putting, you know, hanging up all the lights, got all that done, man. But I don't like that, man. What, what do y'all? I, I just don't like all the work that comes with Christmas. Just let me hand out some gifts, maybe put some toys together like the night before. I'm good with that. But everything else, I don't want to do it, man. Yeah. I just, I'm, I, I'm sick of it, man. Already done with Christmas. Y'all feel the same it, way or not? It, it is a lot. Um, I don't necessarily have to do those things, so I don't worry about it. Uh, the wife kind of does that. The kids put the Christmas tree up along with uh, Kayla since she was back home for one day. Uh, I don't even know if she was here for a whole day. I think she was here for like four hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then she she went over her dad's. And she's just like, all right, I'm going over my dad's. I haven't, I haven't seen her since. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's just one of them holidays, man. All the lights and stuff. So you got to do it. It's not one. It's not optional. Like Halloween always seems optional if you want to decorate. Not a big deal. But people think you have to necessarily do Christmas. And the wife is starting to really get on me about Christmas lights and all this kind of stuff. Like, yo, I don't get on ladders. You tripping. 
<laughs> I'm with you, man. Hey, my, my dumb ass out there on the ladder. I'm sitting there looking at neighbors, seeing how they're doing it. Like, oh, they got, okay, you don't get on the ladder. You got a big old pole that you use and hang the lights up. I see how you, I see how you're doing that. Where the hell do I get this pole from, man? Like, it, it, it's a lot, it's a lot of work, is. man. I've never done it. So, I, I, what about you, Phenom? You be, you be putting lights on the house? Yeah, I usually do. I haven't thought about it at all at this point. I mean, the wife was, I think, kind of jokingly, you know, saying, we need to put up the tree uh, the day after Thanksgiving. And I was like, it's just not happening. You're just not getting into it that quickly. Uh, <laughs> but I usually do put some lights on the house. I don't know if I did it last year. Last year, I might not have put them up. Um, did I? I can't remember if I did last year. But I usually just put them kind of on the gutter, you know, right in front of the house. I have uh, some little lights dangling down. We used to have one of them little... Um, projection light shows uh yeah yeah that i don't think i put that I hate those things year. i think i did we put got that out last year but i did put the regular they are kind of trash they are kind of trash <laughs> hey the <laughs> them mugs like what was that probably like four or five years ago they just like blew up and everybody yeah. had them. oh yeah they're everywhere that's for and, sure um so but that's like lost bought us one that's the easy way to do it but uh yeah well we do something but nothing major Man, for me, it's okay. it's like my wife. Like every year, she just it's just keep like like you know we, you know we wouldn't get a long time, but like you know we start off like okay yeah let's just get like some you know a wreath with some lights and put it on the door. That's like the first year. Then the next year, well let's put some uh you know garlands with lights like around the you know the the banister of the stairs to the outside. Okay, let's do that. It's, oh, I mean, you got it, the wrap around the stairs. You balling. Well, like or the go, you know the little see it in the rich people houses. No, I don't see that in nobody. Drop down, but like, but like it just that's keeps evolving. Regular people don't got banisters, bro. <laughs> like, like, you know what I'm talking about? Like the you little... rich because you got banisters, man. <laughs> Whatever, but like, man, but it just it just it, every year I think like, okay, I've got everything. I've got all the lights. We got lights on trees. We good, right? We good. No, we need like 15 like real. We need, now we need wreaths to put in every window. Man, what is you talking about? You know how many windows we got in this damn house? I'm not putting like yeah. 15 window wreaths up on some windows with like a little light, a fake candle in there or mm. something. Else. I ain't doing all that mess. It's, it's just exhausting, also say man. 15 windows. Mm. I mean, whatever <laughs> it is, whatever it is. I mean, you got to have a lot. Uh, 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 you, got, you got 15 windows, man. Come on now. Don't act like I'm, I'm, I'm doing something crazy. Come on, man. You, you act like, don't act like, you, my windows. Don't act, don't act like uh, you got one window in your house. Come on now. Hey, I can only see out of one. No, I'll just play. Right. I don't. I don't know. I've never counted a windows. Wreath can't but... fit on my small windows. I'm sorry. <laughs> a t- they, no, like they're a tiny wreath. All right, man. Well, all right. I'm. 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 I'm stop incriminating myself. But anyway, cr- Christmas is trash. Get it out of here. I'm ready for it to go, and I'm definitely gonna be pissed when I have the, the like the the day after New Year's when I'm out there in the damn cold, freezing for like six hours, boxing all this crap back up, man. That's the worst part of my <laughs> whole winter is sitting out there, and I'll probably catch the COVID. Standing out there trying to box all this mess up and put it up in the garage, man. I don't want to do it. I'm done with Christmas. You know, I think I think this year is going to be the first year. I always say, I'm like, right after Christmas is over, I'm going to go out the next day or two days later and get those huge inflatables because they cut them to yeah, like 75% cheap, right? off. And every year I say, I'm going to go get it. And I never do. But this year, I'm going to do it. I'm going to wait till Christmas is over. I'm going to go get a big, huge Santa or Rudolph or some big, huge inflatable for wow. next year. I'm going to put it wow. out this year. I'm going to get it for next year. That, mm. See, I, I, I don't Those have the foresight. extra trash. That's extra trash and don't have the foresight. But yeah, they, and, they, and they look terrible when they just lay on an un. Pop, you know, just, just laying on your grass and just wait for it. Because, you know, people turn up, don't, you know, they wait to turn them on to like, you know, five o'clock at night or whatever. Like they right. start getting dark. So they just look like, what's that crap in your yard over there? But, you might as well just have one of them, uh, them for sale dudes that just bobble around. <laughs> oh, yeah. The little, uh, yeah. little dancing little dude. I think it's scary, man. Hand. If you get too close to it, yeah, they're scared. <laughs> <laughs> Put a they, don't, head on. they don't move with any kind of any kind of physics that, that should happen on Earth. I don't like it. It is kind of creepy. I get I get it. <laughs> they everywhere though. Yeah. All right. So uh Paul, you had a rest in peace. I'm gonna let you get it off because I don't know who this man is. No respect to oh, no man, disrespect. look, man, first look, okay, you trash for your, your Christmas and Thanksgiving take. You more trash for not knowing who this dude is. Diego Maradona, man, the uh, greatest, potentially the greatest soccer player of all time. I mean, most people consider okay. him 
if not one, number two. So like you've heard of the dude Pele before. You've heard of him, right? Yes. The black Brazilian yes. dude, he's still alive. Okay. So then the Maradona dude is considered like like his heir or whatever like that. He'd be like LeBron to the, the Jordan, you know, or whatever like that. Or, or I don't okay. know, Luke, uh, uh, you know, like uh, – yeah, like LeBron, and Jordan. LeBron and Jordan. But anyway, dude died over the weekend. Dude was dude had an interesting life, man. There's a documentary on HBO. I definitely suggest you you watch it, Ryan. It's good. It's like one of those documentaries, like you know, it takes all the like you know, it takes all the like the old video, and it really don't like they don't talk over the stuff. They just let like whatever the uh-huh. old the old stuff just you know they let it they let it go. And yeah, there's subtitles because of course he's in Spain or he's right. talking Spanish and he's like in Italy, so they're talking Italian. So but they, but they just kind of like let it breathe. They ain't like. They're not like cutting in on a bunch of like current interviews and like you know talking over what was going on. They, nah, they're just letting it breathe on that on that on the documentary. In fact, I watched most of it again the second time like uh, yesterday or okay. Saturday. It's dope, man. It's like two hours, but it just kind of shows you, man. But the dude, long story short, dude was. Uh, I mean, I didn't I didn't catch him. You know, I, we was little kids when he was out, and of course I wasn't watching soccer like that. But uh, you know, listen, learning more about more about it, talking to old heads. The dude definitely was the man, and like. When you look at him, he he is not physically imposing. Dude was like five foot five, kind of fat, just kind of chunky. <laughs> kind I mean, he was, he was, but and but you know, but dude was just he he had the he wasn't super fast, he wasn't super strong. You know, he they said he never had no physical advantage. He, he but he was quick. But dude was he just had that feet game. But he had that feet game, and it was just in his brain, man. And he just and he was just he was just that dude, and he was he was about it, about it. This dude was like. I really can't put into words. The dude was like, you know, T.O. or Michael Irvin. I mean, this dude was like living the life, you know, mink, mink jackets, you know, in 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 damn nice. Italy, in, in in living in Italy wearing mink jackets everywhere, and you know, dealing with the, he was rolling with the mafia because he was like, you know, he he got traded to like a a city in Italy that's like known for like a lot of corruption, and basically the whole city was owned by the mafia. In fact, like the first press conference they that he had as soon as he landed there, they was like, you know, don't you know this whole city is like run by the mafia, and how are you gonna you know, deal with that, and then the dude, you could see his eyes were shook. He was like, "Man, what is going on here?" But like, then he started palling around with the dudes, and the dudes was basically like, "Hey, if your your problem is my problem, and so you ain't got you ain't got no problems." And so that's that's how he rolled, man. So the dude was like, "Nice." Uh, the dude, uh, you know, at, later on in life, like he tried to be a coach, and you know, but he had like drug problems and stuff like that. A lot of people, like, that's why his career and he had a lot of drug problems. But uh, uh, but he got he he was like a socialist, I guess. Like so, he would hang out with like Fidel Castro. This, but this man was so famous that he went to meet, meet with the Pope. He told the Pope, the Pope was talking about like, uh, uh, like you know, oh, we need to save some money and uh, you know, or or you know, uh, you know, get some money donated and to, to you know help for little poor kids. And <laughs> the dude said he was meeting with the Pope and the, <laughs> he talked to the Pope and he said he looked up at the ceiling and said, well, "Hey, if you need money, why don't you just sell all this stuff that's in here?" <laughs> that's what he told him all right. Space. You mean your gold ceiling's not enough? Yeah, that's what. It, yeah, all these mirrors yeah, and this all this art and saying. I mean, the, the dude. You know the dude led a led an interesting life, and so man, yeah, check out that documentary HBO. I think it's just called Diego Maradona. So people okay. on HBO, two hours. But uh, yeah, man, a little five foot five uh, soccer goat, and I I think he might be the the all time uh, Brown delegation so- uh, uh, sports uh, goat of the of of all time. And I, I'm trying to think who's better. I, I I'm not really sure. Mm, uh, all right. If you got if you got a better suggestion, let me know. But but little dude was 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 so the you don't, you don't give Pele credit for being Brown delegation. He he is he definitely Brown delegation. But he's but I, but man Pe- like okay Maradona you, like the documentary like you see like okay you know stuff the stuff even though it's eight, late eighties early nineties you know the video the footage is just so grainy and stuff like that it's hard to see. Man Pele there's the I try to watch some stuff like on Pele and like there I mean there's clips and stuff like that but it's just. It's just so hard to find stuff from him. Uh, from him, and plus he played so much. He's so much older, and then he, mo- most of his career, he never went to like the European leagues. You know where they had like big money and real co- competition. He mostly just stayed in Brazil, like in these like you know, you know if you're Brazilian, okay, you know what the teams are, but like if you if you're not Brazilian, you don't know where they at. And so they didn't have like a lot of TV coverage and stuff like that. So there really ain't a whole lot of film. You know, it's just kind of like you hear the dude's name and people will say this stuff, but you don't. You don't know what's going on. You never saw nothing. And this Maradona guy, like, yeah, I see I the, that. I can see some stuff, but I can't see enough. But you know, now it's like, do y'all watch the World Cup? Do y'all watch any of that? I'm sure Ryan doesn't. Nah. Ryan, Ryan, yeah, Ryan's super black, so he don't. Yeah, <laughs> no. super black. Super black. Yeah, I, I people World Cup. But stuff. World Cup. But you see, like, when the dude, like Ronaldo, 
uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is like when he when he's got that ball on his feet, man. You see, like that dude, like oh, he's playing against professionals, but you can see, like he's like three levels above. It's just it ain't even close, like what he's doing with that ball. You you, you feel me or you or no? Feel right. Me? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. So I like, I mean, that dude. You know, I can see when the little grainy video is like, okay, this dude is just. He's on. He, I mean, he's not one level above. He's like four or five level above, and he's playing against you know the top of the top. And so that's when I see like Cristiano Ronaldo. Even though I don't know what the hell is going on in soccer, I can't play with a with a flip. But uh, I, I I respect the you know the, how how the dude. I mean, there's there's just certain dudes that are just like they not one level above. They four or five level above. It's, it's like it's not even it's it's hard even compared to like LeBron. Like uh, like LeBron is definitely the best NBA player in the game right now, but. When you see them soccer dudes that are that on that like you know that super elite, they just they just so much better, man. It's crazy. You can't even get the ball away from them. And you like, man, they they ain't using their hands. They just got their feet. How can you know how you doing that? But they, man, they it just it's it's amazing, man. So anyway, I'm talking too long. Check out the documentary. But shouts to that dude. Might be the might be the Brown delegation a sports goat, which is sad that uh, our sports goat is five foot five. It was probably like fifty pounds overweight, but <laughs> take what you can get, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, hey, no, no. I, I still peace. give Pele the soccer goat title, but Maradona uh, or Dona. Does the black delegation get a lay claim to that? Does I he guess. does he claim black delegation or does he claim brown delegation? That's the real question. He's both. He gets the dual. He the gets dual. the dual delegation. Gotcha. But uh, but yeah, Maradona. I didn't know as much as you did, but I am familiar with him, uh, and I know he well, is. Well, I'm only saying all this because I watched the documentary. So, so I, I, if I had known the doctor, I'd be, I'd be like Ryan, like who, what? No, <laughs> but, no the dude, dude. I mean, I've heard the name before, but yeah, man, dude is a dude's a dude is a go, and it's crazy, like. With soccer stuff, like man, we ain't you know I'm you know I'm kind of like Ryan growing up, like I wasn't really into none of this stuff. But you know you'd hear a little name and stuff like that. But like over there, that like this dude, man, that man, look, uh, Google Google his like funeral, man. They out there like it's like it's in a damn pandemic. There's like a hundred, there's like a million people out in the streets just crying, bawling, you know, hugging each other, f- huge flags, and you know, throwing. Oh, yeah. fudge. I mean, think about it. Soccer is the sport over exactly. there. Exactly. So. You know, think yeah. There's nothing if, to compare here. It's like, like it's like Kobe dying times two hundred over there. I mean, like, but but we don't even barely hear about it over here. But I mean, to them over there, it, it, it's wild, man. Yeah. All right. Rest in peace. Yo, can we also to rest in peace to? Know, can we also rest in peace to Nate Robinson? To my my guy. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all want to talk about that? Rest in peace to Nate Robinson's jaw. <laughs> I did not. I did not see the knockout. Uh, I'll get to it. Eventually, but nah. Phenom, did you want did you want to briefly talk about anything you saw last night? Come on, yeah, look. I was gonna mention my week in blackness. Okay, um, I you can will go ahead and go say. Into that. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just hop into it. So yeah, that was one of the things I did end up uh, catching some of that card, not the entire card. Um, and the Nate Robinson, yeah, I, I think we talked about it a little bit. I don't know if it was on the pod or after. Uh, box wine poppy but you know we kind of mentioned it last week and i thought nate robinson i'm like oh this, this is gonna be easy for him it's a world-class <laughs> athlete you know yeah. even though he's never boxed i'm like i'm just sure that athleticism i've seen uh jake paul fight before and he's wild he's doesn't have a lot of um he's not technically sound per se even though he is a big guy um but i think the issue with nate is uh, he did all that training, but they didn't teach him how to defend himself. Uh, so I'm going to give Nate props. Everybody's clowning him, making fun of him. I'm not going to make fun of him because he went out there. He tried to, like, take the fight to Jake Paul. Like, he he was going forward even though his technique wasn't the best. But he was trying to go and get a knockout. So I respect him for that. Yeah. Um you know, trying to go, he could have tried to dodge, could have tried to hold, could have tried to do all that. No, nah, Nate was like, "Yo, I'm here. I'm trying to get this dude out of here." Uh, but but Ryan, Ryan, you, for you didn't didn't, didn't work see it, out that way. But Ryan, you didn't see it though. He so he got knocked out once, and he got back up. He mm-hmm. jumped back up, but you could tell he was he was not he he, he, he was, was he, yeah, yeah he was well, he was, well he, the first time to be fair the first time was I'm, I'm gonna in watch the back right of now. the head he was hit in the back of the dome on that first one so. Anyway, look, man, he was he was seeing stars. He was like me after yeah, like he's a, got he's got he's got zero defense just on this first knockdown. And then, but yeah, so that uh, but then after that he tried to, not he, even up. He tried to get more aggressive after the first, <laughs> and that's that, right. that was his mistake right there. Like, yeah. hey, look, and that's why I say I respect hold up. him. Go ahead. No, I'm saying I respect him for that strategy. I mean, it's not a winning strategy, clearly, <laughs> but <laughs> clearly, 
uh, you know, I respect him for having the guts to to go out there like that. So yeah. shout out to Nate. Everybody making fun of your dog. I, I, I'm holding you up there. Ron, Ron Artest, uh, uh, Zebo. we need one of y'all to reclaim the, 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 the the, the the good name of NBA fighters out there, man. We cannot let Nate Robinson uh, get punked by a YouTube dude, man. We need somebody. We need Matt Barnes. Matt Barnes, Ron Ortez, uh, 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 Zebo, someone, please step up and take care of this, please. Yeah, something like that. Uh, but then the main event, of course, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones Jr. Oh, yeah. I really wasn't expecting a lot from that fight. I'm like, you know, this cat's old. In the beginning, when they first uh, announced the fight, it was kind of a back and forth because the commission was saying, oh, this is there's no knockouts allowed. There's n- going to be no judging. This is basically just a sparring match, essentially. And so even though other people tried to uh, counter that later and say, no, they really are going to be throwing punches, trying to knock each other out. I was like, this is fake. You know, uh, mm-hmm. this is. This is just not going to be good. But it actually was a good fight. Like, it was an entertaining fight. Yeah, it was two 50-some-year-old dudes. Uh, so we're not talking about two prime 25-year-olds. No, it was two old dudes fighting. But it was entertaining. Like, Mike Tyson was working Roy Jones' body. He was going hard at him. Roy was, you know, doing his little clowning where he, you know, sticks the little jab out and, you know, puts his head out like a chicken. It was a good fight, so shout out to Roy. I'm surprised he getting knocked out for that. But <laughs> he kept no doing knockout it rule. All right. So, so uh, Paul, did you see that. any of it? Uh, I know you kind of you usually follow that stuff like on Twitter or something. Yeah, like that. I was I was catching the feed. I saw a little bit of it. My, you know, main thing for me was like I was just disappointed. You know, seeing these two dudes because they were obviously supreme athletes, and they you know they what they like 10, 15 years older than we are. And their bodies were trash, man. And I was like, man, these dudes have been working out for like the whole pandemic, waiting for this fight. And then, you know, they both. Ray Jones look like he's gonna die right now in his post post fight. Oh man, I, look, man, I know he he is he is in bed right now with like a steak on his ribs and like smoking a cigarette. <laughs> man, that dude is in pain, man. It was, hey, yeah. Tyson, Tyson, especially I mean, for fifty four, bro, Tyson look good, man. No cap, I wouldn't be bad I mean, at it Tyson, if I had that. Yeah, Tyson, Tyson, he did his thing, man. And shout out, you know, I'm a huge Mike Tyson fan. And uh, so I was just glad to see him. I mean, he went, everybody thought, okay, Tyson's going to get gas. You know, maybe he's going to come out hard in the beginning and then he's going to get tired. Like, no, Roy was the one that got tired. Like, Tyson was still going strong in round eight. So, because Roy is way bigger than he, he normally was fighting weight, of course. I mean, he old, so he's going to be a little bit bigger, but like, he's yeah. way. He looks way bigger than what it used to be. Yeah. Oh yeah. He definitely. So, like, he definitely that's a, it's a big bigger difference for him than it is Tyson. I mean, my, yeah, Tyson's still a heavyweight. I mean, Roy Jones had a he had to work to get up to like middle middleweight, I think, right? No. I mean, it looked like he worked. He worked he on the, the turkey, and, turkey and stuff. He was stuff. lightweight, and then he he ended up going to heavyweight briefly, briefly uh, which was yeah. kind of his downfall. But yeah, he was never a true heavyweight. Yeah. He was more light heavyweight. Was his uh probably natural well he look like a heavyweight now he just be needs be need them oh to, yeah and the thing is is tyson tyson was like 220 something like he was almost at sort of his fighting weight you know back in the day yeah. um so tyson was in pretty good shape man but yeah so that was that uh shout out to them because i enjoyed that fight uh of course thanksgiving we just passed that uh we talked about that last week uh, you know, we just stayed cooked, stayed home. Uh, I made a turkey. I made some dressing. My wife made, wife made the rest of the sides. And we just chilled around the house, man, zoomed in with the uh, with my mother, my sister, my fam. Uh, did that. Actually, Zoomed with my mother twice because uh, I, I was cooking during the initial Zoom. And so I was like, well, you know, I'll hit you back later. And, uh, you know, so we did that. So shout out to mom's. Shout out to my sister, my fam. Uh, and that was just a restful day. And then last thing I'll talk about, so we don't do, I ain't really do no Black Friday stuff. Wasn't really about that shopping. But on Saturday, I end up, I had to go to like get a tire looked at. I got tired. It's just keep on leaking, you know, keeps going out of air. I put air in it. So I was like, all right, I got a, I got a Costco membership. And uh, so I was like, let me go up to Costco 
and uh, get this tire looked at. So I went up there Saturday. My wife also had like a leaky tire that she's been dealing with for longer than mine. So she uh, decided to go up there too. So we both went up to Costco, <laughs> had them uh, repair our tires. And then we just walking around for like two hours because it took like two hours for them to get done. So we just walking around Costco for like two hours. Didn't really need anything, but just walking around. But the thing is, and this is why it's so brilliant that like Sam's and Costco have those uh, tire repair centers or, you know, put on used tires because they got you captive now. Unless you leave, yeah. drop it off and come back. Like you're going to start to find stuff. So let's say you bought you a patio set. <laughs> wait, I didn't buy wait. a patio set, but I'll tell you what I did buy. So whenever I go up in uh, stores like that, Costco, Best Buy, uh, Sam's, Target, whatever, I always take a look at the TVs. Just see what's new, what's the new TVs out there. I didn't have any intention on buying a TV. And so I'm going through looking, and my wife, she's like, um, and she's the main one to be like, we don't need no TVs in the house. But she was like looking at these little TVs, and she was like, Oh, see, we, that's all we need for uh, our, our office. So we got this TV in our office. It's old. It's like a 720, super thick bezels. The speakers don't work. I actually had to cut the speaker cable because they were buzzing. And I put a um, a speaker, you know, like a sound bar on it. Mm-hmm. And so that TV is probably 15 years old. I bought it for like $100 from my homie back, back, way back in the day. So I had always said, I need to replace that. My wife wanted to replace it with like a 25 or 30 inch what? TV. I'm like, no, we're not yeah. getting no TVs that small. I'm like, a 50 inch will fit on that wall. We don't need no 50. So we go back and forth with that. <laughs> so she's looking at this little bitty TV. I'm like, no. I was like, we can get this one. It's a 50 inch for like $200. Long story short, we ended up walking out of there with a TV, <laughs> walking out of there with you know <laughs> other random stuff that we just... Uh, you know, decided gotcha. we needed a, a 44 pack of popcorn. <laughs> as soon as as soon as y'all checked out, they was like, "All right, his cars exactly. are ready." And I told her, I was like, "I bet they be." I was like, "I bet they look on the cameras." Like, wait, they they keep going by them TVs. Let's hold them for another 20 minutes. <laughs> so they they got us on the Black Saturday sale. But like I said, got a 50 inch 4K TV for 200. So that, that's not a bad deal at all. No, nah, no, nah, that's not. Can't complain. That's it for you. Yep, that's it. Mm, I want to just Paul. I might make Paul make that his his weekend brownness. He is uh, going on daddy duty. We'll see if he comes back. But we gonna keep going anyway. So mm-hmm. let's get into my weekend blackness. My weekend blackness was cool. I appreciated the time off. I needed I needed the extra couple of days. Uh, to be honest, the weekends seem like they fly by. Holidays seem like they fly by too. Uh, unfortunately, but that's just how it is these days. You know, you kind of living for the weekend. So, you know, you ain't got nothing else to do. So things go back quickly. So the first thing I did, like, um, and this is basically a week, a weekend of being old, soft and trash quote Bobby Skullface. <laughs> but this, so basically uh, Thursday, no Wednesday night, I decided, Hey, I'm gonna get some gaming in, get it in early tomorrow. I can spend it with the family, you know, on Thanksgiving and whatever. So Wednesday night, I was like, let me knock out this Call of Duty Infinite. I've been playing it for a minute. It's one of them Call of Duties that everybody said wasn't all that great. But I kind of enjoyed it. I mean, it's kind of a spacey battle. So I see why people don't like it. Um, It's a lot of of aircraft and spacecraft kind of stuff, which, yeah, I I could take it or leave it with that kind of stuff. It was cool the first couple of times, but it gets repetitive. But by the time I was done with this game, man, and it got to the end, Call of Duty stories are great. And I always like playing the one player campaigns. I know people are just like, whatever. I don't want to play no solo campaign. I just want to get online and shoot people. I'm not with that. I, I I like playing against the computer. It's less work and it's still challenging at the same time. I'm not I'm not angry when I die against the computer. I'm angry when some person, some little boy keeps beating me. <laughs> you know, that's 12 years old. <laughs> That's when it bothers me. So yeah, I'm going through the killed, campaign. You're like, mom, can you bring a sandwich? Right, right. <laughs> right. It would just be like, uh, I, I have to go. I have my mom made us ch- uh, dino chicken nuggets. And you're like, dang it. This dude was six. This <laughs> dude killed me eight times in a row. <laughs> right. I'm up here like, dog, man, you you great, man. I'm seeing your friend request. And then be like, 
oh, I'm sorry, my mom said I can't have friends. I'm like, oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so I finished this campaign, man, and I must say, I'm going to admit this. Don't tell anybody, but I got choked up at the end, man. <laughs> I got choked up. I, I literally got choked up. I think a tear might have fell because at the end of this game, like, man, you be with your squad, man. Like, this is my squad. We done gone through all these battles and come back. You know, we're dealing with all this stuff. You get to know these characters and everybody don't come home, you know? And the person I kept expecting to die, like, didn't. And so other people were dying who I didn't think I cared about, but they hit they hit you at the end with uh, basically audio tapes of the characters that they left for their families. Yes, in a video game, they did this. And it was like eight of them. It was even people that I like, oh, this is the dude from the armory. Like, I'm not going to listen to his tape. But I listened to the black dude because I was like, you know, I'm going to listen to the black dude because I was I was bothered by how he died because I thought he didn't have to die. I could have saved him. But, you know, things happen in the game. So I listened to his and then I was just like, oh, man, like that was my boy. Like and then I felt out of obligation. I had to listen to everybody else's tape. I sat there and listened to eight audio tapes of some fictional characters <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, talking about their families and what they uh, thought they accomplished with being in the army and all this stuff, man. And I, I just, I just welled up. <laughs> they think I know what tear fell. And I'm just like, wow. oh, I'm soft, yeah. old, soft and trash. 100. But, uh, it was a good game, man. Good game. And then, um, other thing, old, soft and trash, uh, Fell out of my bed. Yes, I fell out of my bed in my sleep in the middle of the night. I woke up. Dude, I don't even know what happened. It was not like I had a dream and something happened. Uh, I think this might have happened maybe, I don't know, some years ago, maybe five years ago where I just rolled over and I was too close to the edge. But this one, I don't know what happened. Literally, I woke up because of I hit the floor. <laughs> so I'm just like, what is? All I felt was my knee hit the floor, my wrist hit the floor, and I was like, ah, like what is that? My knee was throbbing. I'm laying on the floor because literally I couldn't move for a second because I'm like, what is wrong with my knee? Like this is not good. And my wife is like, uh, you you all right? And I was like, uh, I think so. But I'm still I'm still writhing in pain on the floor because I'm pretty sure I'm rocking back and forth. That's how bad it hurt. And at no time did she get up. She didn't she didn't come over and help me off the floor. I'm crumpled over on the floor. It's not that much space on my side of the bed anyway. Um, yeah, so I woke up in the morning and there is a uh, it's it's not broken. The drywall is not broken, but it is a slight dent. In the wall, so I must have wow. hit the floor and fell into the wall with force. I don't, I don't know how this happened, Fino. No, we need, <laughs> I no need idea. Doctor, my body it hurt. back ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> SOS. Make fun of me, but that's, that's all right. That's crazy. That's all right. Now, were yeah, you man. having some? Do you did you remember? Were you having some type of crazy dream? No, nope. you just have no idea. I have no idea. Now, Did your I know life give you a little shove. Had y'all had some type of <laughs> argument or spat no. earlier in the day? No, there has been nothing. All I know is that my my sleep habits have been strange, to say the least. Um, I don't know what's going on, but it's like um, my wife says I'm having a lot of like uh, talking in my sleep kind of stuff or like. She said, I'll, I'll hop up in the middle of the night for no reason and then lay back down, like something like that. So sometimes I remember, sometimes I, most of the time I don't, though. So I don't know what it is. Wow. And she she always tells me, she's just like, I don't know if I should say anything to you or not. You might hit me. I'm like, if you don't stop that. <laughs> I'm like, how about if you say something to me, I'll probably wake up. But if you don't say nothing, then I'll just have to writhe on the floor in pain like I did. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'll help myself up eventually. <laughs> but I'm, it took me a minute, man, to figure out, first of all, where am I? Why am I on the floor? <laughs> like, I went through all of those. Where am I? Why am I on the floor? My knee hurts. Is my <laughs> wrist broken? I'm not sure because my bed sits up pretty high because I got that. Uh, what, what did I say the name of that bed was? I don't know. Xena, something like that. But it's the, uh, the Zenny. Uh, where the bed sits up super high yeah, yeah. so you can fit like a tote up under there. Yeah, so I got that. So it's quite a bit, man. It might be, you know, it's a good two feet rolling off the bed, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> so. and 
Didn't feel good. So the listener, you know, I'm sure our longtime listeners know, any new listeners might not. The Black Ryan is not a little fellow. So no, I'm not. not you you falling hurt. off that bed. I'm sure that made a, a nice sound. Now, did the kids wake up? Did anybody no. hear you besides no. the way? No, I'm, I'm not big enough to shake the entire foundation, <laughs> uh, sir. <laughs> but, well, you think you shook the house. But like I said, <laughs> like, oh, I'm sure was there was... an earthquake when you hit the ground? <laughs> no, I'm no, saying I'm sure <laughs> it made quite a sound because anybody falling off the bed, a high bed, is going to make a lot of noise. And then the fact oh, yeah, that you I've, hurt I've heard your knee, fall off the bed. you yeah. probably were, yeah. ah, so. I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I screamed out because it hurt bad. Yeah, so, so that's that's more what I was referring to. But um man, I know my wife, she always tells me, just remind me of a story. She said when we first got married, um there was and I don't remember this, but she says there was a time where, you know, I guess I was I don't know if I was having some dream or I was kind of tossing and turning. She said, I woke mm-hmm. up like in a frenzy and looked at her and I was like, who are you? <laughs> like, Really? Wow. That's scary. At her, like, and she, she still talks about that. It's like, I thought, Oh, who is this crazy man? that I just, <laughs> man, but wait, you I mean, you can't do anything about it when that happens. I mean, I don't know, man. And like I said, it's been happening lately. So I get her quote unquote concern with it. Mm-hmm. But she's just she be also treating me like I'm just a straight up psychopath or something, <laughs> like like I'm getting up and I'm going and, and killing people and coming back to bed or something like that is not happening. I was like, I know sometimes I'll wake up and, you know, you might be in the middle of a dream or something and you think you see something, but ain't nothing there type of type of thing. I know I've, I've thrown my pillow at the wall a couple of times, <laughs> oh, stuff yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. yeah you're so, a sleep psycho, bro. Yeah. yeah. You might so, need to go uh, in the sleep study. I don't know. You need to get it. <sighs> Do I know? Sleep we'll study say- or see, you need to see somebody for that. You're throwing pillows at the wall and falling off the bed. Yeah. <laughs> might be that know. time to get some assistance, bro. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I have, haven't heard anybody, so I, I guess I'm okay. The most I've done is, is throw that pillow, I threw the pillow like at the mirror because I thought I saw somebody standing there, so I wasn't sure. But uh, yeah, you got to react quick, man. If somebody in your room, what you going to do? I know you probably should. She should rather that I do that than don't do nothing and just stand there. Just lay there and let her get cute. I was trying to protect her. Anyway. All right. So I guess the main event would be the unexpected guest that we had on Thanksgiving. I debated whether or not I was going to even talk about this on a podcast, but I feel like it needs to be talked about. And I will deal with the repercussions of such talk. (laughs) So... Um, now, did this unexpected guess is that could that be a cause of uh, your sleeping no, woes? <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. No, this is uh, a friend of the wife, so her childhood friend. I mean, they have been friends since like kindergarten, I believe. Uh, and I have never met her because apparently, uh, right when we met, they had a falling out. So the girl knows of me, but we've never met. And so um, we get a call from the in-laws and they're just like, hey, uh, you know, your friend, your friend's over here. And my wife's friend is is she stopped by uh, unexpectedly. Now, keep in mind, my uh, my in-laws are OK with that type of behavior. Most black people are not. <laughs> um, they are Southern to the core. So they want people to drop by their house like they are upset because I don't just drop by and talk to them randomly. Um, you know, like old boyfriends have dropped by childhood friends of hers from way back, just Mm. dropped by apparently and just talk every now and then kids from the neighborhood type of a thing. Mm. I ain't with that. I'm not finna do that. Thanks. You know, as far as the, the ex goes, brother, you need to move on. (laughs) <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why that Negro was stopping by years later. Like, we married, man. Like, quit coming over here. Hey, it's time for you to, to see. do something like, else. It might not work out. Let me. Just... Yeah, yeah. I know he is. I, I get it. Awesome. I understand. With dreams and throwing pillows. <laughs> <laughs> so the door might be open more I than I think time, it is. Right. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> so um, she calls, and my wife's like, hey, uh, you know, my, that was my mom. She just said, that she stopped by and that she she said that she was going to come by here. And then I was like, how'd she know where we live at? And she was like, 
I don't know. I'm guessing they told her. And I'm like, okay. I was like, well, she going to be outside because she ain't coming up in here. Right. Because I was like, COVID. we ain't talked to her. Yeah. I was like, look at COVID, man. You can't come up in here. Like, plus, don't wait till now to try to visit. I, I haven't. I've never seen you before. And we've been together for 10 years or so right now. And all of a sudden you want to come over and visit once the once the pre-apocalypse starts. Um, I, you know, kind of keep going about my day. I figured she was just stopped by. I thought it was just going to be a, a hi. I'm going to go out to the car, say hello, you know, meet my meet my daughter, you know, that she hasn't seen uh, before. And that would be it. But uh, I come out of the bathroom and uh, I hear talking. In my dining room. Mm. And I'm like, what is no, this? No. Right? <sighs> so I'm just like, okay. Was it's kind of no, muffled. No, okay. That's Go ahead. The, that's Go ahead. Next. Yeah. So it's kind of muffled. So the first thing I was, I'm like, well, they're both nurses. Uh, the, other, the other chicks are in. I'm like, so they know better. I know uh, the wife was kind of like, yeah, we're going to have to get, I guess she's like, I got to get a mask on and all this kind of stuff. So I assumed that that's what was happening. So in that case, I was just like, eh, all right, maybe still make it quick. And it sounded muffled, but then I, um, so I just, I still, I just sat there because nobody, nobody told me to come out and I kind of didn't want to because I was kind of upset that she was even in the house period. <laughs> Like it's just not a good time right now. now were Plus, you, in you some can't come over here. Basketball shorts, a white yes, beater, I was. and a headband. Yeah, uh, yeah, basically. <laughs> like I'm in my I'm in my house attire. Like I would not wear this around anybody. <laughs> right, right. So uh, I hear her say, "So where's the minister at?" And I'm like, "Oh heck no!" Like she's up in here, like trying to meet people for real. <laughs> and then I heard my wife. She's just like uh, Ryan. And I'm like, oh, heck no. And she's calling me. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, now I got to put some clothes on. And, and keep it, man, I ain't even got my hooper shorts on. I got my sleep shorts on. Mm. So those are the short shorts. <laughs> the cotton, oh, the cotton, I'm uh-huh. trying to stay, stay, uh, stay cool uh, uh-huh. in the bed stuff. I would never wear outside of my room ever. <laughs> like, I don't even go get water in them kind of, them kind of uh, sleep shorts. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm like, all right, man, let me throw on this shirt, put my basketball shorts on, and that's the least I'm gonna do. Uh, you know, I had I had just finished, I had just woke up, so it hadn't been, it was pretty early. And yeah, she's just standing on the hall. So I come out and I'm like, yeah. And she's like, oh, could you come here for a second? And I, you know, I stepped out the room and here this chick is standing in my hallway. And I took a deep breath and she's just like, oh, hey, how you doing? Now she's acting like everything's fine. <laughs> I, on the inside, am fuming at this point. Because I'm like, first, why are you here? I haven't seen you ever in my life. Why is now the time? You're up in here with your kid. Why are my kids running around your kids? Your kid. It's only one. Um, why are y'all talking and no masks on? Mm. All kind of violations up in here. Mm. And I'm standing, mm, I guess I'm probably eight feet away at this point. Um, now, did you have a I mask on? There. Did you put a mask on when you? No, I'm in my house. I'm not putting a mask on. You need to get out. Now, Phenom, I, am, I have become a new me. I'm a new me now. <laughs> Old Ryan, that would have been a problem. <laughs> like I would have said everything on my mind and she would have walked out the door immediately after probably, but I'm a new person in Christ. Thank God. So I just went through my head, all the select things that I wanted to say. <laughs> like every time she finished saying something, I was going to be like, so you pick now to come over <laughs> like, during the apocalypse. You was just like, Oh, let me, I know COVID is bad now, but let me go visit my friend that I haven't talked to in 10 years right. or haven't seen in 10 years. I know they've talked because they text every now and then. I was going to be like, now is the time. But again, first time I met her. So I was also like, okay, I can't do that. Can't say that because I don't want to have that hanging over. I know it is my wife's friend. I know she misses her. She doesn't say it. But I know like that's a a friendship that she now hasn't had since I've been in her life. And so I kind of wanted that to rekindle a little bit. 
um, you know, with with every every friendship that ends like that, there's always uh, some beefs. Chicks have a lot more beefs than we do. No offense, ladies, but it's true. Uh, we kind of fight it out and we'll be done with it. Women, y'all just secretly have battles or openly have battles and just keep talking about each other behind their backs. So, um, yeah, I'm just like, do I really want to deal with these issues or not? I've been thinking over the past few years, but everybody needs friends. And so I would never do anything to stop that. So I want to I want to meld that together anyway. But uh, just not now, not during COVID-19 in my hallway uh, when I can't account for your whereabouts. Right. So yeah, that's crazy. I don't I don't know who like I know she went over the in-laws house. Who else's house does she go over? I don't know. She could have just made a trip around the world and visit everybody in St. Louis because I know she don't live here no more. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, that would have been a full Marty Mar moment. Just everybody would have been kicked yeah, out. Man. Just everybody got to go. I couldn't. I couldn't do it, man. Family would have had to go. Nope, y'all been playing. Y'all see y'all in 14 days. Everybody just get out. Get to step <laughs> it. Even, even with that gap and like you've never met them, so this is their first time meeting you because that was the thing that was really holding me back. If oh, I had already had hell, them yeah. and established who I was, then I would have been fine. But I can't come out and be a jerk like your first time meeting them because that does never get fixed. But I don't think it's being a jerk in a pandemic, and I and it, it's going to come across that way. But yeah, I know it's, it <laughs> it's got to be it's got to be safety first. And my wife and I have had that conversation uh, because. You know, she's had like friends that would drop by, not unannounced, but she'll Mm -hmm. say, you know, hey, so and so is going to come over. Uh, And I'm like, okay, y'all going to be outside though, right? (laughs) You know, she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, they're not coming in. And so uh, even even her her mother and her grandmother came over, I don't know, maybe like two weeks ago or whatever. And, you know, she's like, oh, yeah, mom and grandma stopped by. And I was like, you're kind of silent. And she's like, oh, they didn't come inside. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I love them, but you know, this just, this just ain't that time. And so right. I think since this has started, like literally the only people that we've had in this house are like people who are doing work. So, you know, talked about the plumbers, um, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. We had somebody come in and put, um, you know, like bug, bug spray and uh, stuff yeah. like that. Like those have been the only two people that have been in our house since it started besides us. So uh, you, you gotta be diligent, vigilant, like all of that, you know, just about protecting your house. But I know it is, it is uncomfortable. Matter of fact, today I was at the gas station and I saw one of my homies, former coworkers here, uh, was getting gas at the same time and he was about to leave and he saw me and what mm-hmm. was weird is so he had his mask on in his car when he was leaving he saw me like stopped in front of me took his mask off got out he got to so you know who he is to come talk to me no i knew i already I <laughs> oh, okay. Once I saw him, he still had his mask on i'm like oh you know what's going on then when he got out of the car he took the mask off you know, and came up to proceed to have a combo. So I, I just sat in my nah. car the whole time, put my mask on, and he was, you know, socially distant from me. But still, yeah. I was just like, still, Ugh, this is a little uncomfortable. And I wasn't like, Negro, put your mask on. But I just right, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, in the summertime when Greg came over to cut the grass, I was talking to Greg out in the grass, and neither one's have a mask on. Oh, no. <laughs> We was outside. <laughs> and so I was just like, well, I ain't finna go back in and get a mask. Like, I, 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 I was just trying to pay the man and be gone. I didn't even think we was going to talk. But, you know, we ended up talking a little bit longer. But that was in the summer, too. So, yeah, it's like less less of a issue than it is now, I think, maybe. Right. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, man. So uh, the wife kind of betrayed me. So <laughs> not sure how I feel about that. Uh, I did say something about it because she was like, uh, and when it happened, she's like, ah, oh, well, I'm not going, you know, she's not coming in here. I guess we're going to have to wear masks, like all the things that you want to hear. But then all that went out the window <laughs> when, the, when the doorbell rang. Right. Because when I saw her, when I saw her on the ring, I was just like, oh, I thought she was coming to the driveway. Like she at the door with the little kid. Right. 
Like, so I'm like, you bring a daughter got the, the car. Ring now. She doesn't ring yes, the doorbell. Man. I got to wipe that off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm just like, all right. And I, I told the wife, I was just like, uh, I was like, I don't know no other way to say this, but I was like, when you're married to somebody, you got to deal with the things that they do too. Like, I got to deal with the consequences of all that. I was like, we just talked about this. So what's going on? And I kind of just left it at that. And we, we really didn't talk about it because I didn't want to like start a for real fight about it. It's it's not worth it. What's done is done. But eh, I do feel some type of way about it. So I mean, the thing is, is like everybody has their, I guess, moments of sort of let down with it. You know, even even the people who are most like vigilant, you know, there's something that you do at some point in time where it's like, eh, that's not really that smart. And that's yeah part of the reason why it just keeps going. I mean, some people just don't care, but even the people who do care a lot of times, you know, you kind of take a chance. And and for me, I'm like, is it worth the risk? Like if I'm a, if I'm a take a chance, it better be worth the risk. You know, I'm not going to uh, be outside talking with no face mask. Like I said, I was, at, I think I told you I was at a car wash today and yeah. nobody had a, a face mask on up there and people were standing right up in each other's face talking like that's not worth the risk to me i'm not just gonna be at the car wash with no mask like if it's something my mother was in town and i saw her okay that that's maybe that's worth the risk now not to her health but i'm just saying if i'm gonna catch it from my mama i can live with that but i'm not just catching it at a car wash or i'm not just catching it at uh some random person's house i'm doing stuff i'm tired of doing <laughs> and then you just break containment and just be like, yo, come on up in there. <laughs> Have a seat. Let's start talking. Like, what what are you doing? So I know I was real short, short with the chick. So she probably gonna think I'm a jerk anyway. But hey, technically she thought I was a jerk when I had never she never heard anything about me. So <laughs> All right. but that's another story, I'm sure. As their their friendship devolves or or devolves or whatever the word is for that, when it comes back, we'll we'll have more conversations about this. Gotcha, um, gotcha. All right, all right. So let's get right. back into these topics. All right, we had Paul, a rapid fire. I don't know where he joints. at. Yeah, we gonna have to. So I wanted to talk about this uh, situation with Epic Games. So Epic Games creator or founder Tim Sweeney. Uh, the Epic Games is uh, right now. I guess their most popular thing would be uh, Fortnite. So they're the creators of Fortnite. They uh, they basically penny pinch every dime that they can from the uh, the users. Um, they're selling you uh, uh, guns. They're selling you uh, basically uh, characters. They're selling you anything they can. Characters, different colors. It don't matter. They'll sell it to you. Um, not worried about it at all. But he, uh, Epic Games and Apple got into a big uh, fight about this a little while ago because Apple charges everybody the 15% commission inside their app or inside the, the, Oh yeah. 30. I'm sorry. Um, and so they Fortnite is trying to fight back at it, but the way they did it, they kind of just all of a sudden got up on the game and was like, yo, we ain't taking it no more. (laughs) <laughs> and they had this whole video montage with the characters talking about this ain't 1984 like we don't want to be treated like this anymore you know fight back tell apple you don't want this and so basically we're gonna dial back uh all our prices and you could buy this stuff directly from us and you don't have to go through the app anymore and so doing that is in violation of apple's uh i guess code of conduct or whatever they want to call it and the reason why this is on this show is because your man, uh, Mr. Sweeney, has likened it to the civil rights movement. Yes, he said that Apple <laughs> Apple wanted to do this is just like the civil rights movement and that the people need to fight back. And if the people don't fight back and say that it's wrong, it'll keep on going. And so that's what he wants. He wants to change that commission from 30 percent to maybe like 15 percent and then they'll be happy. But uh invoking the civil rights movement was utterly ridiculous and this dude continues to double down on it he has not gone back on it yet um (laughs) he's tried to skate his way out of it and say well what i meant was is that because everybody sat back and saw that it's wrong and nobody said anything uh bro this is not the same uh 
everyday human rights are not the same as you uh, being two rich people arguing over another 15 percent of the money that you're fleecing from all your users anyway. So I just wanted to bring that up. I didn't know if you were aware of it. It's ridiculous. But I wanted to make sure we mentioned it on the podcast just as a, a tech story because we don't really talk about too much tech stuff. Yeah, well, you know, I I do follow tech, uh, you know, certain tech fairly closely. And so, yeah, I was aware of this, um, you know, kind of battle between Epic and Apple. I'm, I'm going to defend Epic a little bit in a couple areas. Number one, okay. I'm going to say in terms of Fortnite, uh, which I'm not really a Fortnite player, but I'm OK with them taxing and charging for every little thing because the game is free. Like you can play the game without yeah. buying all that stuff for free. You don't have to pay anything to play Fortnite, but you pay for the upgrades in that type of situation. I'm cool with it. I'm not cool when you get like 2k where 2K you have to pay you for 60 or $70 for the game. And then they still nickel and dime you for every <laughs> single thing. Right. Like I paid full price for the game. Why am I paying for everything else? If you gonna give me the game for free and then pay me for upgrades. Cool. So, I'm going to give Epic a pass on that in terms of, uh, you know, the beef with Apple again. I mean, Apple is one of the greedier companies. So 30 percent seems, you know, excessively high in comparison to what other people are playing. But Apple, they got the market share like they're the big dog. So uh, I'm okay with Epic fighting back against that because this is going to benefit a lot of other like smaller publishers like epic can afford to pay it there are other right. smaller indie publishers that really can't or i mean they can because they're getting um they're getting more exposure through apple but at the same time like that's just a big tax that's like a mafia like tax um but on terms of invoking the civil rights i do agree that was a bad move um you definitely you don't even want to mention it like find <laughs> right. find another example to use other than civil rights. However, I do understand what he was trying to say. I think I think what he was trying to say was right, but the fact that he invoked the civil rights with it just kind of destroyed, you know, the whole purpose. So what he was saying is like during the civil rights that stuff was legal. Like people are saying, "Well, this is what you agreed to." Uh, pay Apple. And he's like, you know, in civil rights, when people were lynching black folks, when people were discriminating, you guys said the back, right. of all of this, like that was legal, but those laws were unjust. So it's okay to fight unjust laws is basically what he was saying. Now, tying the civil rights to, again, your rich video game. <laughs> another right. One. Let me, let me take, let me take 30% of your billion dollars, sir. Right. That's, and then you that's in bad form, but I get what he was saying. Yeah. 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 I, I do too, but they, man, keep the civil rights out your mouth, man. <laughs> that, that's really the crux of everything I wanted to yeah, say. 100. All right. So, Let's move on. Let's talk about these uh the, the zombie apocalypse. We already we thought it started, but uh apparently it started in Denmark already. So what what we need to do? Yep, yep. So uh this story, and again, check the show notes uh for most of the stories that we talk about. We have links uh in the show notes. So check that. This is from USA Today. Uh I'm gonna read the headline first because it's just a crazy headline says dead minks infected with a mutated form of COVID-19 rise from graves after mass <laughs> culling. You're right. And so, you That's know, crazy. both of us, we were into sort of zombie apocalypse type of stuff, the walking dead and uh, other different shows like that. And that's what this made me think of. So what happened is they had a bunch of minks and this is crazy in itself, a bunch of minks, uh, that died from COVID-19, like a mutated yeah. strain of COVID-19 uh, killed these minks. So now you got COVID mutating, it's killing minks. You know, we talked before early on about what, some tigers or something with COVID-19. Uh, so these minks died. Uh, there were so many that they had to sort of do a mass grave. So they like dug up just a mass grave for all of these minks. Let me see if 
to show how. When many. you say so many, it was like I think it was said fifteen million or something. Was it millions? Yeah, well, fifteen what I was million. To look for. They said the nation pl- has planned to cull all fifteen million minks in the country. So they're going to kill all of them. Yeah, I don't think that's not how many were in this grave at this point. I don't think it says that it wasn't in the millions. Oh yeah, not this particular grave. Yes. Yeah, yes. but I think they were just saying, "Yo, we we can't track it, so we just got to get rid of them all or whatever." But anyway, let's just say it's thousands or hundreds or thousands of minks, and so they buried them in this mass grave, uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, you just start to see minks, dead minks, like popping up out the ground. <laughs> and if you just buried let's let's say a thousand minks and then the next day you come outside and you see a thousand minks above the ground uh That's you're weird. gonna think it's a little bit crazy so uh stop in there before we get to the explanation or if you want to explain what happened ryan but like what would you think if you were a, a mink grave digger <laughs> and, uh, you just hey, pulled I- a double shift the night before and you come back to work and see uh, half of those minks l- laying on the ground. Like, what's going through your mind? As long as they're not moving, I think I might be okay with it. Uh, I would assume something dug them up. Uh, it would have to be something of that, you know, science can explain that. So I'd be fine as long as they're not moving. Because when I first read that headline, I was just like, "Are they? did they not die when we thought they were dead? But that is not the case. So that's good. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I I don't think I could be that calm about it, especially if it's that many and they all popped up. I'm like, yo, something like nothing is digging up a thousand dead minks. (laughs) So uh, I'm trying to think of the show. There was a show on Netflix, I think, is uh, that one I was talking about last week. It was like a, a Chinese or Japanese one. Oh, the kingdom, the kingdom. Yeah. So remember in the kingdom and anybody who hasn't watched, who plan to watch spoiler alert, but remember how in the kingdom, the zombies like went to sleep during the day. Like they hid from the sun. (laughs) Yeah. They went and like hid. And so that's what I would have been thinking. If I saw those minks out in this daytime and they just all land, I'm like, Oh snaps. Like when the moon come (laughs) out, it's on. (laughs) So (laughs) that would have freaked me out even more. The fact that they were think about that up and dead again so uh but yeah it's crazy man and and so basically what ended up happening because i don't think we ever really explained it is they said that uh they didn't dig deep enough like you there, there's a reason that people are buried six feet deep you know you get that that phrase six feet deep or more uh there's a reason that people use that term because i guess scientifically if you bury somebody that deep then there's not going to be like the gases can't kind of push them up and push them out. But because they only mm-hmm. dug three feet for this and man's animals grave, can't smell. it's like the gases, the natural gases in the earth it, that wasn't deep enough. So it just kind of pushed them up and pushed them out of uh, the three feet of dirt that were above them. And so you could smell it. Like you said, you could smell them. You, uh, some of them actually came up. So it's just, like that's just conspiracy crazy. brother. Conspiracy brother is not buying it. All right. Uh, the gases did not push these bodies out the ground. The gases with themselves push themselves out of the ground, but it wouldn't push the actual body out the ground. Gas would go up. The bodies would not. I don't believe that. That's never happened. Why we've not? never seen that happen. If in the anywhere. body's on top of the yeah. gas, if the gas is nah. under the body, why would the body would them? the gas would just pop out eventually? Now it might it might. I don't know. It might explode at some point. <laughs> I mean, maybe if it was packed in good enough, maybe it would build up and, and kind of explode a little bit. But I don't think it's just going to push a bunch of bodies out. I have to see a picture of this grave. It sounds like some sensationalism by the USA Today story. Uh, but, you know, I'm fine with the story. I liked it. I enjoyed it. But come on now. Well, then, so then why do you believe that there is this uh, notion of burying people or burying things at least six feet deep. Because if you're, if you're going to have a body, like you don't want animals ravaging your bodies and, and pulling them out. Cause they would, if you put it six feet, then they can't smell it either. 
and it's that's far as a mug to be digging. No animal digs that deep to get something. So that that makes sense, all the more sense to me. Yes, I think yes. it's literally that's that's all it's about. And just you don't want the dirt to wash away, you know, if it rains or floods or something like that's really more so what it's about. I don't think it has anything to do with the gas is pushing a body out because the gases themselves would go up, but not the body. That's my only beef with the story. Maybe so. Maybe so. You might have to take yep. a trip once COVID's over. Have to take a trip. Go over to uh, where was that at? Show us Denmark and the Minx. Yeah, go go to Denmark. <laughs> we got we to gotta find out. It's going to be World War Z over there. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Let's uh, skip Paul. Skip Paul's story. Don't yeah. sound like he's coming back. So let's go. Conspiracy brother again. Did you hear, Phenom, about this, uh, the monolith that was found in the middle of the Utah wilderness? I did. Um, I saw after you posted the story, I hadn't heard about it before then. Yeah, yeah. So I read it and I was kind of like, ah, like, what is this mess? Uh, you know, and they said monolith and I'm like, eh, it can't be a monolith. How big could it be? But I think it was relatively tall. Like this isn't a, a small thing. It's a, a silver um, kind of rectangle kind of structure. Small, but I think it was like, I don't know, 12 to 15 feet high. I think it was like 15, something like that, if I remember the original story correctly. And monolith appeared. They just happened to see it. Uh, the video actually of the guys finding it, they were kind of joking about it at the time. Like, oh, look what we found. Oh, it's like uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, blah, blah, blah. And um, I was kind of like, is this a joke? But no, nah, it wasn't a joke. Literally, there was just this, this little, little monolith just sitting there for no reason. And they didn't know exactly why I was there in the middle of wil- the wilderness Nothing inscribed on it. Nothing. Just there. Uh, they said they thought it was, you know, it had to be created because it's a square. It's not something that just occurred non uh, or a rectangle. Nothing, you know, naturally caused this. And I kind of put it on the list. I didn't think it would make the list. And I actually was going to cut it from the list until today when said monolith has disappeared now. So that's the crazy part. This thing appeared, was reported last week and then disappeared before our very eyes. <laughs> Why did this happen? Why did somebody do this in the middle of nowhere? Nobody reported where the thing was, so whoever put it there had to be the one to move it. Uh, I guess you could probably satellite it and find out what it is. I don't know, but Conspiracy Brother was on the case, and so I had to check this out. Uh, what do you think about this one? Uh, just somebody doing a hoax because nobody ever claimed that it was theirs. So what do you think? Yeah, I think it was probably, I don't know, probably some, uh, what do you call them, person doing, I don't want to say a social experiment, but just somebody, you know, who wants to do some type of art, you know, when people go out and and paint things, uh, whether it's graffiti or whatever, like, I just feel like somebody just wanted to do something uh, different and see who found it. Now, I know that uh, they did say that people, like, they didn't tell people where it was because i think this is like super remote american land you know that's not supposed to be uh really disrupted they didn't want to mess up the uh the area the terrain and they didn't want people coming looking for it and i think i read that somebody actually did come like of course probably on tiktok or on the gram and (laughs) taking pictures next to it and stuff like that so i think whoever put it there probably moved it um what was interesting to me so the only time i had i think really heard the term or used the term monolith before i think it was what seventh or eighth grade and we had an art project and i'm not i'm not the greatest artist uh Mm -hmm. in terms of drawing painting stuff like that and i remember i had this art project due and i hadn't started it procrastinating and so Late at night, this is back in the day. Is, I'm going to date myself a little bit. Everybody use Wikipedia now, but back in the day, you had encyclopedias. And so right. my mother would have <laughs> some Funkin' Wagnalls uh, encyclopedia. <laughs> what? Oh, Funkin' Wagnalls, man. 
Funk and Wagner. We had yeah. World Book. That was like I don't know the, that. The, the leading right. encyclopedia maker. And so I went, I grabbed the Funk and Wagnalls. I opened up. <laughs> uh, I think I just randomly grabbed M. And I'm like, I got to go through the encyclopedia and find something to uh, to draw. And I opened the page. And what was on there? It said Monolith in the Desert. And really? so I drew a monolith in the desert. Mm, so you foretold this. <laughs> right. But the monolith, Get a prophecy. the monolith that I drew was more like what's in the background. It was the rock, you know. Okay. And so I always was thinking like, okay, a monolith is like a big rock. It's like a canyon of some sort. So when I saw this story and I'm looking at the monolith and this is little uh, steel stainless steel post look like something from star trek i was just like yo i thought the background was the monolith mm. yeah no this is uh apparently something a made structure i thought uh i hadn't i haven't heard that word used ever to be honest <laughs> and i watch i watch a lot of sci-fi um i did recognize it from all the mentions of uh 2001 space odyssey in other films uh because of said monolith i did my wife and i tried to watch the movie 2001 a space odyssey yo that movie is trash Mm. not a movie you can watch right now maybe it's good in the end but i spent about an hour and a half of a two two and a half hour movie and i was like yo this is so slow i can't believe people even talk about this movie um, I guess the space stuff was kind of ahead of its time. Uh, it was right when we started talking about going to space. So maybe that's why. But man, it was a terrible movie. I, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> so not not worth it. So don't go back and watch that if you haven't watched it. Yeah, I'll say and, that. And speaking of terrible stuff, I believe I got like a D on that monolith in the desert art project. Why? So, I mean, that it's that is what it, a monolith was, that's right? Pretty terrible. Yeah, I mean, I'm the the definition. It says like a large, single, upright block of stone, especially one shaped into or serving as a pillar or monument. So I think monolith is really just sort of one thing that's sort of standing up. Usually it is stone, but in this case, you know, it's this metal thing. But it's just kind of one thing, kind of sticking up on its own, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Well, I am curious to see who made this. I know I heard that they said that they didn't want to tell people where it was because this is apparently a remote place in Utah. They thought that if anybody tried to go there, like people would get lost and they would have to rescue them. Mm. Uh, So it's kind of like that. Uh, I didn't see anything about the, you know, sacred land or anything like that, but probably because all land is sacred that uh, that, you know, white people stole. So um, <laughs> if it's a park, that means that white people stole it from the Indians and uh, or Native Americans, then that means that they probably, uh, you know, they just made it a park instead of giving it back to the people. So hopefully one day we find out who did it. I heard that I read that this was illegal to do to put, build something man-made like that in the middle of a nature reserve or a national park. So that could be why they removed it. Uh, if it's just metal, I don't see how anybody could track you down. But it's still strange. It's there, and 10 days later, it's not. Yeah, and I was right. It was this dude, this, uh, a white guy on Instagram who went and found it. And then, of course, he told everybody. How did he how find, find it? it? How did he find it? I wonder if the park people take it down. Huh. I think whoever put it there probably took it down. The aliens took it back. They might have. They probably like it's no reason to talk to these fools. <laughs> <laughs> they some idiots, right? Like, how many people voted for Trump? It's like, no, take it back. He's <laughs> killing everybody, and you can stop it by mask, and nobody's wearing a mask. <laughs> right? Let's get out of here. No, this is not worth giving them our like, money. This is not. We thought this was an advanced civilization. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. not. Let's go talk to the ants. Right. All right, so uh, we man, we at an hour fourteen. I think we can end it here. Paul does not look like he's going to get paid for this episode. So, uh, if the people would like to complain and find out, or no, not complain, if you would like to send a cash out to Boxwine Poppy to hire a nanny for his son <laughs> and daughter 
for uh, when he's uh, on this podcast for an hour and 30 minutes once a week. Where could you send that money? Yeah, I don't know what his cash app is, but you can dive into his DMs. He is on Twitter at Box Wine Poppy. If you want to uh, reach out to the Black Ryan, he's on Twitter and the Gram at the Black Ryan. If you want to reach out to me on Twitter or Instagram, I am at Ghetto Phenom. Of course, if you want to reach out to us as a collective, if you want to support the show, we are at Black Delegates. There's an underscore between Black and Delegates on Instagram and Twitter. Also have a Facebook page for all of the moms and grandmas and granddads out there. Uh, just look for the Black Delegates podcast on Facebook. Uh, if you want to help out the show, if you want to help us grow, tell a friend to tell a friend. Uh, the best way to help us out is just to tell folks about the show. Share it. Uh, email it, text it, uh, drop it in somebody else's DMs. You don't have to slide into our DMs. You can slide into uh, somebody else's DMs with the Black Delegates podcast. Uh, and also, Ryan, what else can they do to help us grow in terms of, uh, well, uh, I'll just leave that to you. Yeah, well, uh, I'd like to see some five-star ratings. I'd like to see uh, more so. I'd like to see the podcast shared. Uh, I think that's the best way to get it out. Who cares about ratings? Is anybody reading those? If I decide to listen to a podcast, I listen to it. I don't look at the comments. I don't care what y'all talk about about the podcast. I like it, and that's good enough for me. More than likely, you're like that too. So just share the podcast. If you see, a, a, especially if you've listened to an episode, you think it's good. Hey, friends, have you heard this podcast? Check it out. Uh, send it to somebody. Uh, you know, Get people on the podcast. Have them uh, listen. And that's all we can ask, especially if you was uh, coming over to people's houses unannounced. You could at least brought the Black Delegates podcast with you. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, if you really, really like the podcast, just stop over to Black Ryan's house and tell him in person. No mask required. (laughs) (laughs) Just try by. Apparently not. Right. Just tell him, hey, show up. I like the pod. You did a good job. (laughs) Hey, if she had said that, I probably wouldn't have mattered stopping by. (laughs) But that's not what happened. Like, who are you again? (laughs) <laughs> so I'm I'm a, I'm gonna go by the Black Ryan's house. I'm gonna do like a video, like climbing up the light pole or something, mm. and then I'm gonna post a picture, and I'm gonna just see if people can find it. You know, are people downloading the picture and looking at the uh, the wow the geo code to see is that how they found the monolith? Maybe Probably. the monolith is in the Black Ryan's backyard. Yeah, so. yeah, I guess. So what we're going to do. I'm going to challenge the listeners to show up at the Black Ryan's house unannounced. Mm. Shout out to Black Twitter. <laughs> if anybody <laughs> can do it, they can. That's, that's, that would be the crazy thing. Hey, if you find a monolith in the middle of the Utah wilderness, I'm sure you can find my house. It shouldn't be a problem. But, uh, but yeah, I'm sure uh, I guess you can track uh, FAA flights, uh, see where they went randomly in the Utah Desert, I'm sure it's, or not the desert, but wilderness. And I'm sure, you know, that's probably the way he did it. What was their flight path? And then you can figure it out. All that should be public information to a certain extent. So shout out to the nerds out there. Have you watched uh, on Netflix, it's old, uh, Don't F with Cats? I never watched it, but I know what it is. Yeah, you had to watch that. And we, we may have to talk about that next week, even though, again, this has probably been out for a year. It's been a while. But yeah. I watched that uh, over this past week. It's actually pretty Did interesting. You? Yeah. Really? Really? So okay. I'm going to say check it out. We don't talk about that at some point. It may not be next week, but I'm going to put it on the I'm going to put it on the uh, keep so that we could Uh-oh. we could discuss that. Okay. All right. I'll do that. All right. Well, I guess in lieu of Paul, I'm the Black Ryan. Here's Ghetto Phenom, and we will see y'all next week. All right. Peace. Picks up about three yards.